Welcome to probably one of the most important guides I've made, the mid game. We'll be discussing direction and scaling, transitioning, game plan, setup, opponent reading and much more. If you missed my video on the early game, I highly recommend you check that one out first as I'll continue with some of the concepts from over there. Now the reason I think this mid game guide is so important is because most questions I get are regarding this topic. It's also the toughest part of the game which is loaded with hard decisions and directions you can head into. Alright, let's get started with game plan, but first make sure you subscribe so you won't miss the late game guide and other future content. It would also make my day if you can just take one second to click the like button if you enjoyed the video. Alright, so I'll continue with my chess analogy from the first part. In the early game we set up our board with an opener, so we're in prime position to take on our opponent. Now openers often repeat themselves, but no single mid game is ever the same. If you have initiative, your goal is to attack your opponent, navigate your pieces properly and make sure you don't accidentally blunder because if you lose a piece you'll fall behind. Your opponent will have an easy time crushing you. But if your opponent has initiative, you have to play safe and make sure you're defending properly. Maybe even setting up traps or counter attacks. One thing to constantly keep in mind is how the late game is going to unfold. If your pawns got doubled or king is unsafe, that's gonna suck. Okay, so what does this mean for battlegrounds? You also want to have initiative because then it's easy. You'll be stomping your opponents. This often just comes from finding direction or scaling units early. This can also be achieved by power leveling and taking big hits, which is of course on the riskier side if you can't recover. In chess this happens as well, you can sacrifice pieces or open with gambits for a faster development. So essentially your battleground's goal is to always be ahead and gain an advantage. But if the rest of the lobby is ahead, you have to play defensively. Be as strong as you can possibly be and look for a way that you can somehow get back into it. And just like the example, make sure you always have your late game in mind because if you don't, you might lock yourself into a second place board. I'm going to discuss all of this more in depth later in the video of course, but it's important to identify what our mission is. So in short, we need to upgrade and replace our board, find direction, scaling and basically something to do for the rest of the game to be ahead of others. Direction, let's continue with that. As you know, scaling and direction go hand in hand. Why? Well, you only have 7 spots on your board, so you can buy the 7 strongest units in the game and that would be the strongest possible board. Instead, it's obvious that we just need to increase the stats of those units to win fights, because there's no other way to improve. I mean, there are a couple compositions that improve without traditional scaling, which is buying buffs, but they upgrade their minions by finding specific key units to spike. For example, when you have a Goldrin, every Macaw you get is plus 5 plus 5 stats on every beast. So direction is one of the most important things to find as early as possible in every game. The big mistake that new players make is forcing compositions without the proper direction, or wrongly identifying units as direction. Attack leader, party elemental or ghost coiler are not direction. Right now I'm going to cover most of the direction in the game for every composition, but also which heroes are the best with it. For elementals, the earliest direction you can get is a Nomi. This unit is very hard to discuss completely, but if you want to know more about by what turn he's too late, I recommend my latest video. Lilrag and Genie are also great direction. Genie might honestly even be a little better at first since it provides so much value, while Lilrag starts off pretty slow on its own. I'll also mention that early major domos can sometimes be direction enough for its sweet scaling, but it can also fit into menageries and such. Heroes that do well with these compositions are mainly economy heroes, so gold cheaters like Milhouse and Maiev, but also power level heroes because you like being on tier 6 with this. Most power level heroes are economy heroes, but some tempo heroes can level quickly as well. For dragons it's mainly just Caligals on tier 6 and this might be the best unit in the entire game because it has such good and reliable scaling. Nadina can sometimes be direction enough if it allows you to power level to 6 and roll for Caligals. I'll also include Razor Gore because tripling into it with a board full of dragons often locks you into this composition as well. The same heroes that were good at elementals are also good at dragons. Beasts only have two key units, Mama Bear on tier 5 which is very good to put a big pile of stats quickly on the board and Goldrin on tier 6 which has a lot more potential as his scaling gets doubled from Akaz and Barons. Most heroes are good with beasts except for maybe Millhouse because you need to roll a lot to get the right pieces. For demons I'm not going to include Wrath Reaver because a lot of people just pick it up early to be strong for a bit and then sell it off later. The main direction I'd say is a floating watcher. If you hit that with a weaver on the board you're all 
set. And if you miss on watchers but hit a Morganis, that works as well to help scale up those weavers a bit. But generally you'll need additional scaling because otherwise you will only have like two or three big units. Once again, almost every hero can play demons. Pirates, their main direction is Hogger and Double Salty Looter. It's not rare that people pick up a Salty Looter, but as soon as you find two of those, you got some decent scaling going. Hoggers are of course money printing machines that help out loads. Eliza can also in some sense be seen as direction if you already have a full board of pirates because it's really strong and very hard to transition out of. Most heroes can play pirates but power level heroes definitely have an advantage. And Murlocs basically have one unit. Bran. So if you have a full board of Murlocs and find a Bran, you're all good. Again, most heroes can pull off Murlocs. From Max and Early, the Flectobot is sometimes honestly direction enough. It's such a good unit and often hard to get rid of without getting too weak. You do have to find additional scaling though, like again a Bran, and even modules might be considered direction because once you give a Divine Shield to some strong units, they're likely to stay. It's not worried that Baron is mainly a tempo play because double death rattle is strong, but it doesn't scale, so I wouldn't call it direction. All heroes can play max, but since most pieces are on tier 3 and 4, you can do much better with power level heroes than just max. Tempo heroes with built in scaling like Ragnaros and Edwin do especially well with this. Then Menagerie's main units are Bran and Lightfang. Anyone can do this, it's pretty simple. Mitrex is sometimes direction if you already have a really good Menagerie setup. Then there's stuff like Jugglers, Taunt Comp, and Death Rattle Bells, but those are generally really bad and hard to scale, so I don't think those deserve real direction. Shoutout goes to Bran as he's a direction that can fit into almost every single composition. It's a great way to scale up everything from mechs to pirates. <sighs> okay. Direction was a big topic, let's move on to leveling. Just like last time, I already made a full guide on it so you can get most info in there, but here are some mid-game specifics. Usually you're staying on tier 4 if you tripled into an early 5 and want to get super strong, or if you're really behind and are trying to make the best out of what you got offered. Most likely you're on tier 5 and the main leveling decision you have to make is whether or not it's worth it to go to tier 6. This usually depends on how ahead you are what you're looking for, the hero you're playing, and what composition you have going. Right, that's it. So positioning is again the same deal, I do have a full guide on it already that you can check, but in essence you just want to play around stuff. Check what tribes are in the lobby and play around things like Wildfire Elemental, Hydra, Early Lystras, Divine Shield Taunts and so on. This is mainly done by positioning your Taunts properly and your first couple of units. Next up is transitioning, in my opinion the hardest thing in all of Battlegrounds. As I've said before I could make like a one hour video on this topic because there are so many variations and little nuances to keep in mind, but I'll try to condense it as much as possible and give you the most important things in order to get better at it. Okay, so there are one turn transitions which can happen when you hit major direction like a mama bear. You do these one turn transitions because it's just the strongest you'll get. With a mama bear, you just want to get a full board of beasts instantly. So these are generally simple because you just replace everything right away to get super strong. Now, Khadgar also allows for one turn transitions, but yeah, I'm not going to make this video any more complicated complex than it already has to be. And then there are slower transitions that can take up anything from 2 to 5 turns. You basically just sell your weak stuff to put in stronger stuff. And depending on how strong you are and how much potential you have, you can greed at a certain degree. Let me explain. If you're very weak, you'll have to transition super slow, so you'll be as strong as possible every turn. But if you're fine and have an immense potential in the future, you can go greedy and get weak for a couple turns in order to scale even more in the next couple turns. The main thing I noticed from reviewing games is that people get too attached to units. If something has no major use to you anymore and is falling off, you'll have to see what is going to be better in its place. One big tip is raw stats. Count how many stats your board or unit is, then count how many stats your board or unit will be in one or two or three turns if you keep this or transition. Of course you can't do all this quick math 100% accurate, but it's a guideline and gets you thinking in the right way. Another important thing to keep in mind is that you don't board lock yourself, meaning you always have at least one spot to cycle units like buffs. Next up, let's talk about reading your opponents. So in the early game you don't care too much, but mid and late game you do. It's really important to see if you can play a greeter line or if you have to go safer, all depending on your next opponent. Here's what I look for. Did they spike? So did they hit a triple? Did they level loss turn? And so on. What is he playing? Is it max? Then be sure to play around shields properly. Beasts? Then expect a cleave. 
demons then you can throw in a poison unit if you're playing without bob's buddy remember their board so you know if Murosons will be worth it or not and the last thing i want to share is your late game setup how do you get ready for the final part of the game you need to know what tier to be on and consider leveling in the future for example if you're playing dragons and missing an adina you have to go to tier 6 most of the time so think about your end goal what is the ideal final board that you can have maybe instead of that brand you want the golden selfless so start slowly collecting those units finally i Identify what your permanent units are, the ones that you don't want to sell, and everything that is sellable or upgradable. You again never want to board lock. An example for this is having like 5 permanent units, 1 unit that helps you with scaling like a brand, and one more flex spot to play your buffs in. And we're about to look at an example mid game that perfectly illustrates some of my points in this video. Again, this was taken from my gameplay channel, so if you want to see more, you can head over there, or you can catch me live on Twitch. Enjoy! You can get a 6 drop here. Dragons are out. But I still want the 6. We triple the token here, not the main body. Does that matter though? That doesn't even matter. I could No, because I get rid of stats then. Like if I took a triple the, the main body, I can still triple the token. Issue is I don't have money. If I want to make that play. I can level, sell, sell, buy. I kind of know 5 though. Uh, if I can go for a 6, you go, we go for a 6 always, right? Get rid of this and, and this. We got rid of like 9, 8 and stats? Is that ever worth it, dude? I think so. Lil Reg is super greedy. It might be in Mama. Otherwise, I might die. I want to take the Lil Reg, but I don't think I can. I don't want to press hero power here either. I, I don't think I can sell to hero power. Might actually have a round that I do well with the dragons. Finally got Caligos turn 10. Nice. That was a good overkill for me. Alright. See, if I took Lil Rag, I definitely lost this fight. Like, super hard. Um, I still lose this fight, probably, actually. Nah, okay. So now we can consider going to tier 6. We got on the house, so we probably level. This guy is really strong though. Brand's Blessing doesn't help me that much. I mean, Brand's Blessing Overseer? Oh, it's so tempting. I guess I want to level and on the house because we're on top of the lobby. Oh, this guy triple into tier 6. Fuck. I still think I go to tier 6. We have ice block up anyway. Yeah, we can green a bit. Sure. We hit it again. This time we take it. I play against a couple of friends actually. I play against JK. Uh, I'm learning openings as we speak. Like, um, I've been practicing. I, I'm gonna reposition a bit here first. Um, like so. Uh, but yeah, I uh, I'm lear I'm learning the London system. That was a lot of fun. I'm also learning um, the Queen's Gambit. Was the first one I learned a while ago. I kind of forgot how it went, but I can still do it. Wait, what the fuck is this positioning, dude? <laughs> Wait, what is this board as well, huh? Why does he put Golden there and Macaws after it? Wait, why does he put Macaws after his Golden? Oh, to buff. Wait, that, no, that still doesn't make any sense. Because the Macaws... What the fuck? We don't take too much damage. I'm happy with this. Thank you for the three months now. You got your mug bag. Enjoy enjoy your mug again. I appreciate it. Oh, we got another little rag. But yeah, thank you, thank you. Welcome back. I appreciate the support. Ah, uh, wait, we got Murloc, Demon, Elemental, Beasts. It has to be Amagadon on then? But Gar, no, I think Gar, the HP is gonna be really good, right? Oh, this guy's also Elementals. I think we out Elemental him though. There's also Pirates? Fuck, I should have maybe taken Amagadon on here. Oh. I don't want this to get buffed. Oh wait, this to get buffed, this to get buffed, this to get buffed. How do I do this? Jesus Christ. How much can I sell? Nothing. 
I have an idea. I have an idea. It seems batshit insane, but we have two units on the board. It's gonna work out, trust me. Oh, now we get Among It on again. This guy's elemental, so I buy a spore. See how big this is in one turn. It was worth it. Okay, that was, that was, that was something. <sighs> yeah, okay. The spore, oh, the spore kills his biggest unit for free. And this guy just obliterates his stupid pirates. Nice. He didn't even get to kill. He's dead. <laughs> oh, that's disgusting, dude. I'm so sorry. Hey Mr. Ben, I see that you are playing very well, which is cool and all, but I voted that you wouldn't make top 4. I'm sorry to disappoint, that's how you don't vote for a bottom 4, man. And we got a genie. Pog Champ. And we got a second genie. I'm so sorry, but yeah, you're you're not gonna get your points. You're not gonna get your points, dude. Um, oh yeah, riddle Spore. It's a good tech option, but I don't need it in right now. I think we got rid of this as well. The issue is just that, like... If you put these on your board locked... This is not that good anyway. It's falling off. I don't want this to get buffed, because we're this is our cycle spot next turn. Uh, another compatible spirit might be too greedy. You might have to start taking Venom. Because this guy dealt 21. We do have Ice Block up, though. I guess this guy wasn't that strong. We literally just dealt 35 damage. Why am I scared, dude? <laughs> Why am I scared? Against Beast, like, if he doesn't have poison, this could carry. Um, we can't really play around Cleave that well, because I picked up these taunts. But yeah, I don't think we can afford to play to greedy and take up at a sprint. So it's Venom or Auto Defense. Right? Auto Defense is actually better, right? Because it could shield this or this. I think I take Auto Defense. We'll see what happens here. I don't know about the positioning, honestly. I don't really know what he's playing. Oh, it was a Macaw. Was he the Macaw Golden guy? No, that was a Lich King. Oh, they're both Macaw Golden guys. Okay. That was the worst possible defense matrix. Actually, defense matrix is bad. I forgot that I'm gonna put two more taunts in. Yeah, that was that was bad. <laughs> so yeah, I think we lose this. No, this thing is big. Oh, we triple Lil Rag. Pog. Now we have board space again. Um, gold hang gold and red weld. Just destroying your lobby, nice. Happy to hear so. I uh, we kill him. Okay, let's see how this game goes. I don't know what happened last fight, but uh, we still popped off. We got double golden, no rag. Um, ooh, so yeah, we didn't know he had this. Fuck, no, I didn't play around it. I could have played around it easily, but. Yeah, I, I didn't know. Although, wait, he has only one poison. Oh no, he has this. Never mind. I was like, he can't deal with this, but he can. That's a bad hit for me. Fuck! I think it's still fine, though. I've got money! Somebody getting second gold, gold little rag, and I warped. Uh, I don't know what happened. Luckily the recording is fine though, I'm also recording this game, so if you want to see the full unlagged version, it's probably gonna go up on YouTube because it's the first. If you're watching this on YouTube live right now, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. 